Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Green Impact Partners channel, strategically positioned to lead the transition to a green and sustainable future and economy, of course. Joining us, Chief Executive Officer Jesse Douglas. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you again, Kyle. And always a pleasure to have you back. Today, I want to kind of hone in on this one specific topic, carbon tax credit, something that's probably a little bit more misunderstood from the retail audience, especially kind of being in an energy business like yourself. Do you want to first explain uh, how the government's kind of applying tax credits, how you guys are taking advantage of them, and maybe what they look like from both sides of the border? Because we're hearing about this globally, but there's no way each government looks at it the same, right? Do you want to explain that to us? Not even close. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a super complicated question. We're gonna we'll, we'll do our best to work through it quickly here. But um, yeah, we, we get so Canada and the U.S. are much different. State to state is different, uh, and province to province is different. And then that, that applies the same way uh, for the stuff we have in, in New Zealand, Australia. Um, everywhere has a, a different regime of what they're doing, and ultimately, what it comes down to is the price they're trying to get the end user uh, or user of, of carbon emitting energy to pay to emit that that source. And uh, so if you look at Alberta, they've gone kind of with a, a carbon uh, a carbon tax that kind of trades through and you've got carbon credits that can only be used within the province. If you look uh, at California, CARB is the only region in the world that's actually, or in North America, that's allowed to manage their own air resources. And that's from decades and decades ago of early smog problems within LA that they've got that. Uh, and, and that is the most lucrative market, most, most lucrative large market in North America is to sell into the low carbon fuel standard system in California. Uh, within Canada, BC does have a low carbon fuel standard, uh, and it is much more expensive uh, for people to play in than California, but much smaller. Uh, and then we're seeing Canada hopefully have, uh, and I think a definitely valued low carbon fuel standard coming across. And all of those are a form of carbon taxes. Uh, so in some cases, we're selling directly into the credit market, uh, and those flow through our business as our revenue source of generating the fuel. And in some cases, we're selling the fuel itself with, with offset credits tied to them, so the, the business or the end user that uses it can reduce the tax that they would pay. So speaking from that kind of offsetting with uh, the gas production and stuff, can you kind of just uh, briefly explain in just a, a simpler manner exactly how that's kind of impacting your business? Like, how are you taking the gas, kind of applying like the carbon that you're kind of reducing? Like, how does that that kind of um, that step by step work for the average person? How are you pulling the carbon carbon out? And then how are you sending that off to get a check? Let's just put it in simple terms. Yeah. So what we do is we measure life cycle of measurement, right? And so we take the the existing situation that exists with the products we're going to use to, to generate energy from. Uh, we take a three year back to average and then we, we take the, all of the impact that we're going to make to build the facility and all of the impact that we're gonna make to get, the, get the final energy to market and we create a carbon intensity score. And we are looking for carbon intensity scores that are negative, meaning what we're doing is actually removing carbon or carbon equivalent from the environment. Uh, and so because the, the methane that we capture, the primary source of RNG that we're developing is somewhere between 127 and 27 times worse for the environment, depending on if you're counting year one or year 100, it is substantially worse for the environment than carbon. And so if you capture that and use it as energy, you can actually end up effectively carbon negative. And that's what we do is try to make sure that we're, we're, we're working through into a circular kind of economy environment where we're taking existing sources of waste, turning them into energy and, and making a massive environmental impact at the same time. Well, on that note, Jesse, I really appreciate these insights today. That was great. Thanks, Kyle. Talk to you soon. Always a pleasure. In light of that, folks, stay cool, stay awesome, and I look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.